Hey guys, welcome back to Biking Roots. Welcome back to Texas. Uh, today, we're gonna be talking about uh, suspension forks. Maybe the bike you bought came with uh, whatever it came on, a lower end Sun Tour. Uh, most bikes under the eh, $1,000, $700 range will probably come with these. The nicer forks are very nice. They're very light, they're very plush, but they are very expensive as well. But today, we're gonna be talking about more budget forks. So your forks in the eh, $250 range. Not all the options are gonna be here or talked about today, but I'll try to give you as many as I can. Suntour Radon, Manitou Markor, uh, this newer-ish RockShock Judy Air, and RockShock 30. So the decision you have to make is, should I upgrade my fork? Like, this is the uh, San Quentin 1. So it comes with the Suntour XCM. This is a coil spring. Uh, it's pretty heavy. We're going to find out today how much it weighs and we're going to put an inexpensive uh, Sun Tour Radon on there, shed some weight, hopefully improve the ride. So you may ask yourself, is it worth upgrading the fork or should you buy the next model like instead of the San Quentin 1, get the San Quentin 2 which already comes with the RockShock Recon. You need to do the math and see is it worth your cost upgrading or just getting the model that's just above it. When you're deciding to upgrade your fork, you wanna check a few things. One of the things is what type of steer tube do you have? All right, so this is a straight steer tube, one and one eighth that goes down versus a tapered head tube, which goes from one and one eighth to one and a half inches. So you can see how it's bows out. Some bikes will have tapered, even some of the inexpensive Walmart bikes now. The problem though is if you get a tapered fork, your headset may not be a tapered headset. All right, so you have a straight steer. Then I recommend looking at your hub. First, find out how it attaches to the wheel. Is it a quick release or is it a through axle like the through axle like so, which uh, screws into this side. A quick release hub is 100 millimeters wide. All right, so just a quick summary. Uh, head tube, wheel size, well travel as well. You wanna know what travel you want because you don't wanna to go too high where you're gonna become really slack. So you need to know a few things, your steer tube, the wheel size, how much travel you wanna go, and then what type of hub compatibility you have with your wheel because if the fork you wanna use may not work with your wheel and so you have to get a new wheel or get a new hub and then rebuild the wheel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. It can get a little techy. Take a look at the fork you have. Uh, you'll probably have a yellow sticker or something on there that will say what its use is for. Uh, on this one, I don't know if it's gonna be clear or not, but basically it says for leisure cross country only. You'll find that on many, many budget forks that come on uh, inexpensive bikes. Uh, they're just not designed for normal mountain biking in my opinion uh, you can take them on some light trails on ebay you'll find also a lot of uh, generic brand forks uh, from asia uh, most of those that i've seen also are all even though they're air forks they say leisure cross country only if you have tried some of the ebay ones uh, leave me a comment and let me know your luck with them all right starting at the bottom this is the uh, rockshock 30 uh, 30 millimeter stanchions here that's this part here this actually has a coil spring in it so no air uh, it's a decent shock uh, I haven't had any complaints with it I've ridden a few bikes with it uh, they're not bad if you start to get into any bigger riding you're gonna meet its limitations pretty quickly uh, you can adjust the preload on the springs and also the compression uh, you do have a rebound as well on here in one of the next videos, I'll talk about what all that means, but today we're just going through kind of some of the options and what you could get. Okay, this one is, I believe, pretty new. Well, it's new-ish. It's using older stuff, but anyway. This is the RockShock Judy. Uh, this is their inexpensive air fork, which actually is the same price now uh, in some of versions as that. So 170 bucks. This is kind of my new favorite so far because it's air. It feels very similar and may have a similar spring to the Recon. The stanchions, those are smaller, but I just installed this on an inexpensive Walmart bike that I have, and yeah, it's, uh, it's not bad. So comes in a few different configurations, 100 millimeters, 120 millimeters, depending on your wheel size. So this is the RockShop Judy. You have uh, lockout, also compression adjustments. There goes your air, and you have your 
uh, turtle control here for your rebound turtle or hair. This is a fork that I've used on a lot of different bikes. This is the Manitou Markhor. Uh, this one is has 30 millimeter stanchions, so not as big as like your Recon or your Radon, but it works pretty well. Um, I, one thing that's nice is they have tapered and they have straight steer tubes. And so I forgot to mention, most of these are gonna be straight, but they do have some tapered options as well. So check your retailer, because you may have some other options as far as through axle, and also if it's a tapered headset. So these are straight. This one's a tapered version. They have 26 inch, 27.5, 29. Uh, they have lots of different options. Um, I've had good luck with it. You have rebound control, you have lockout that you can put a remote on if you want, or just move the dial on here and your air goes there. Pretty good for, I'd say it's on par with your Recon. These run about 229, 230 ish retail. All right, this is your Suntour Radon. Um, it's, I'm gonna see if it's better than the Epixon. That's one that I used on recent Walmart build, but the Radon is an air fork as well, 32 millimeter stanchions. Uh, you have compression lockout here. Here's your air cap. And this one's a through axle. Then you have your rebound control right here. Here you'll notice the sticker. It says use only for cross country and all mountain. So no downhill, but it does not say do only for leisure cross country. So it's a little more robust and beefy for what you want to do. These run, uh, I think in the 220 ish range as well, though I've seen them for sale, different sizes for super cheap, depending on where you're looking. I'll have some links below if you can't get out of the house or your local bike shop's closed. Um, if not, go to them and have them install it or at least price it out for you. All right, so we're gonna take this guy and get him off and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the headset issue. Oh, I almost forgot the RockShock Recon. So these run about 250 bucks. You'll find that the RockShock Recon is spec'd on a lot of uh, beginner bikes and uh, it's a good shock. I haven't had any issues with it. I'm actually been using a recon on my trail e-bike. This one has more travel, but uh, it's not bad. Uh, I don't have a ton of complaints. Yes, I'd rather have a nicer rock shock, but for the price, I think it does fine. Uh, long-term use, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. If anyone has any long-term use, let me know. The recon has, uh, you have your compression adjustments here. Like I said, I'll go into this in another video as far as what all that means. Uh, your air and then you have your rebound underneath there a little bit bigger stanchions 32 millimeter stanchions so it gives it a little beefier look i'll briefly also mention another option which is the sun tour epixon i've used this on a few different bikes and it's okay it's similar to the radon i would say in feel it doesn't have uh as many adjustments uh basically it's air or has a rebound adjustment. So what you'll find on the San Quentin one is even though it has a tapered uh, head tube, um, it actually is using a straight steer fork uh, with a crown race uh, adapter. Unfortunately, I'm putting a tapered fork and so this will not work. So here's a new sealed bearing headset that uh, I'm gonna put in the San Quentin. Um, if you have a San Quentin and you're doing this, San Quentin one and you're doing this upgrade, a uh, link below for the type of headset you'll need. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you have a straight steer head tube, uh, there are some adapters that allow you to use a tapered bottom cup. So you can use a tapered fork on a straight steer. Link below. Let me know if you have any questions on that. So weight on the XCM, 6.75 pounds. That's one of the heaviest I have had. All right, and the Radon's coming in at 4.2, 4.2 pounds for the Radon, so not bad. Since we're weighing them, this is the Judy 27.5. Actually, I weighed the 29 earlier. Uh, 4.65 for Airshock. All right, Manitou Markhor 27.5, 120 inch to travel. Uh, 3.95 pounds. All right, RockShock XC30, 27.5. We're at 4.9 pounds, so a little bit heavier than the Airspring version. All right, so the San Quentin is done with its uh, fork transplant. All right, so we replaced this heavy, oh, man, this heavy uh, Suntour XCM with this uh, lighter Air Fork Suntour Radon. Uh, saved about a little over two pounds off of the bike, which, as you know, in the mountain biking world, two pounds is uh, sometimes difficult to shed. So two pounds lighter, uh, you have more adjustments as well. Let me know what you think. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, we'll talk about the ride in a second. Hopefully 
when you have a new shock, you are getting a, a lighter shock, you're hopefully getting more adjustments than you may have had before, and it's improving the overall ride of your biking experience. The Radon performed okay. It was uh, not too bad, however, when you pull up on it, you have this weird sound. I messed with the rebound quite a bit, but it just didn't improve. It just doesn't have very good rebound, in my opinion. A Pixon, same thing. Uh, compared to like the Manitou, has much better rebound and feel uh, than the Radon. Also, uh, in addition to the Manitou, the RockShock Judy, actually, and the XC30, also much better rebound. All right, so which of these budget suspension forks is the one to buy? Um, if my budget was 170 bucks, I would definitely go for this uh, RockShock Judy Silver. Uh, I think it's a it's a great feeling fork for the money. Uh, I would skip the RockShock 30 and uh, Suntour Pixon, Suntour Radon. I would go more for the Judy at that price range. And then if your budget's a little bit more, I would definitely go for a Recon if you can get one in that $250 range, depending on the configuration. Uh, I think it's a pretty decent fork. Uh, if uh, you can't find one in that configuration for less than $250, uh, look into the Markor. It's also very good shock. It's uh, very similar, but uh, those are my picks. All right, guys. Well, that's going to end today's video. Hopefully you found it useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos similar to this. Hope you guys are doing well. We'll see you out on the trails. Uh, have fun out there. Thanks. Bye.